Assalamu alaikum everyone. Good evening. Uh, am I audible to all of you? Can anyone confirm? Okay. Okay, so this will be an uh, interactive session, okay? Uh, we will speak and we will talk and uh, we will have an interactive discussion about hematology today. That is uh, MRCPCH, uh, AKP, part one, FOP and TAS, okay? So this is totally theory part we will discuss. Uh, hematology is a big chapter. We cannot finish in one session. So maybe I will uh, take repeated sessions, okay? Uh, before I start, is there anyone having any discussion or any question to me? I'll be happy to answer it. Okay, if you want, I will directly go to my session. Uh, this is the first screen. Can anyone confirm me the screen is uh, visible to you? Yes, ma'am. Okay, very good. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Welcome. So I hope you all know me by this time. I'm Dr. Tamanna, one of the consultant pediatrics in Bangladesh. And uh, I'm the course mentor, MRCPCH, part one and part two. Uh, so we are going to start soon. Just give me one minute so that uh, people are joining still actually. So just give me a few seconds, I will start, okay? And you can uh, ask me any query, just open your mic because uh, the chat is not visible during the presentation. So better if you open your mic and then ask me, is that okay? Yes, ma'am, inshallah. Okay. So hematology, as I said, hematology is a big chapter, okay? It is one of the biggest chapter like neurology, like cardiovascular. So hematology is also a very big chapter. Uh, so we will try to cover up in next session. Today's session, we will cover up most of the things. Okay, and next session we can cover up the remaining. Okay, so let's start. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So hematology comes with hematopoiesis, right? So hematopoiesis means what? Means the generation of lip blood cells, right? So we know that stem cell is the mother of all the cell, but stem cell has divided, divided sections, like some stem cell give rise to WBC, some give rise to RBC, some give rise to platelet. So here, any one of you have any idea that from which of the stem cell Red blood cell comes from, there is a divide. Yes, please. Someone is Reticulocyte. speaking. Reticulocyte. Uh, reticulocyte is not the mother cell, you know. Reticulocyte is the, you can myeloid say. Precursor. Myeloid precursor, lymphoid precursor. Very good. These are the precursor cell. And I must, I must inform you that reticulocyte actually it is an immature RBC. From reticulocyte count, RBC is not produced. Reticulocyte count is an immature form, okay? It is an infant form. It is an infant form. So actually the answer is this one. It is coming from megakaryocyte erythroid progenitor cell. Is that clear? So you have to know this question will come in which part of MRCPCH exam? this type of question very basic in which exam it will come in task yes, madam okay yes it will come in task that from which part from which part of the uh, from which part of the wbc in which part of the cell the RBC is coming from, okay? Now let us come, let us do this session more interactive, okay? So we know that inside our RBC, there is 
hemoglobin. Okay, this is a very basic. I know most of the things you know, but this is a re recap. Okay, so remember in the hemoglobin, there is a one mole of heme with four mole of globin. You have to understand this four globin chain. Why? You have to understand uh, this globin chain because if this because globin chain has problem, yes, please, yes. Uh, Ma'am, it changes in uh, uterine life, then thereafter in infancy and, and in adult life, and most of the diseases, these are um, altered. Okay. So remember in thalassemia, this type of disorders or hereditary spherocytosis, okay, this type of disorders, the globin chain is altered or globin chain is absent. Okay. So yes. this will alter the disease. So remember hemoglobin structure is very important for TAS and not only TAS, also important for FOB also important for AKP because if your basic, if your foundation is not so strong, then you will have problem in every step of your exam of your patient management. So you have to know this structure very well. Okay. Types of hemoglobin. What are the types of hemoglobin? Embryonic means what? Embryonic life. You all know, I know that you know, embryonic life means up to eight weeks of life after uh, in, after the, uh, in, uh, for, uh, what is that called? For fertilization, fertilization. After eight weeks. Yeah, we call it embryonic life. It is called, fetal, not fetal life, it is embryo, an early stage. In this embryonic life, we have Gower and Portland. Okay, we have Gower and Portland hemoglobin. So Gower and Portland hemoglobin is not our concern because we are not dealing with embryonic hemoglobin. So Gower and Portland hemoglobin is made up of epsilon and zeta. These things are less important, never came in exam, but just for your knowledge. And remember, fetal hemoglobin is most important for us. Fetal hemoglobin is made up of hemoglobin F. This is the main component, hemoglobin F. There is no hemoglobin A, no hemoglobin A2, remember, in the fetal life. And in infant, I mean, before one year of age, what are the types of hemoglobin? Can you tell me? Ma'am, A, A2, and F. Yes, very good. A, A2, and F, very good. So, hemoglobin A composed of, this is very important chart. Hemoglobin A composed of alpha and beta. Two alpha chain, two beta chain. Remember, what is the picture? Did you, did you remember this picture? This picture, this is the alpha, beta. This is alpha, beta. Clear? So this picture should be clear in your mind. Two alpha chain, two beta chain. This will cause hemoglobin A. This is the main hemoglobin main hemoglobin for adult life. A means adult. A2, A2 means minor. It will be minor amount, alpha to delta two. Hemoglobin F, now this is the fetal hemoglobin, same fetal hemoglobin present in infant. This is alpha hemoglobin, gamma hemoglobin. Okay, alpha hemoglobin, gamma hemoglobin, two alpha, two gamma. This is present in Fetal life plus infant. Now, infant up to which age? Can anyone tell me? This fetal hemoglobin normally present up to which age? Anyone? Four to one. five months. Four to five months. Okay, anyone? Anyone else? Six months. Six months, very good. Anyone else? So from three months of age, it starts to decline. It starts to decline from three months of age. And then it comes to, to the lowest point that is called Nadir at 12 months of age. This is the graph. It is coming like that, lowering down. So, so this has an importance. Can anyone tell me why this three month is important for us to know? 
Yes, ma'am. In thalassemia, uh, this doesn't decline to the amount. Uh, it, it normally declines, uh, starts declining after three months, but mm -hmm. not in thalassemia. Achha. But why anemia in thalassemia then, if it is not declining? Uh, because your idea, the your idea is good. Capacity, uh, mm -hmm. The oxygen releasing capacity of fetal hemoglobin is, uh, it uh, it bounds oxygen tightly as compared to A. Mm -hmm. Now that is called, that can cause hypoxia. But why anemia? Yes. Actually, it starts to fall after three months. That is why, that is the reason thalassemia major patient presents within three months. Because they start to fall. Hemoglobin okay. F was very important for these patients. Oh, yes. This was a major. After three months, they start to present with severe anemia because of this tendency to fall. And there is no A to substitute. Yeah. Yes, there is no A. And the hemoglobin F is starting to fall. So where is the child going? Where he will come hemoglobin? Where the hemoglobin coming from? That is the reason... That is the reason three months is very important clinically, okay? And you have to remember that three months is also important for physiological anemia of infancy. Even the child is not thalassemic, normal child. He will have some anemia within three months because it is called physiological anemia of infancy. So this three month is important for every child because in this three months, hemoglobin F started to fall. And by 12 months, a normal child hemoglobin F will be zero, nearly zero. So what will be the adult hemoglobin then? What will be the child hemoglobin? Only hemoglobin A and hemoglobin A2. Hemoglobin A will be maximum 98. and hemoglobin A2 will be minimum. This is the normal adult hemoglobin. So we came to know that hemo the hemoglobin structure, hemoglobin type, and falling of hemoglobin, these are very important, right? Now let us go to the next slide. So types of hemoglobin. We already know types of hemoglobin. Okay, now let us know what is 2,3 DPG. Any one of you have any idea what is 2,3 DPG? It's an okay. enzyme, but forgotten. Yeah, very good. Very good. Finish it. Yeah, it's an enzyme that... Dye, um, it converts the glucose within the RBC. Uh, no, it is actually DPG. 2,3 DPG. What do you mean by DPG? We already know. What do you mean by DPG? Diphosphoglycerate. Glycerate, diphosphoglycerate. Yeah. This diphosphoglycerate, it is an enzyme, okay? It is an enzyme, but it main it is released released from the tissue. Suppose this is a muscle tissue. Suppose it released from the muscle tissue, okay? When hemoglobin, this is suppose a hemoglobin molecule. This comes to the this tissue. This is in the blood vessel, right? Hemoglobin molecule is in the blood vessel. It comes to the muscle to supply the oxygen right when we do exercise like so when this blood vessel and containing hemoglobin rbc it comes to the tissue near the tissue it released oxygen it released oxygen pardon me for my drawing i know this is not very good drawing so it released oxygen but the oxygen can diffuse back to the hemoglobin now because it is soluble so who prevent this back going back? This 2,3 DPG prevent this going back. I hope it is clear now. So oxygen can release into the tissue, but it will not go back because from the tissue, 2,3 DPG will go to the hemoglobin. This 2,3 DPG actually has higher affinity than oxygen. Am I clear to you? Higher affinity. It has more yes, magnetic power. It has more magnetic power in the 
hemoglobin. So it will bind into the hemoglobin. So oxygen will not go to the hemoglobin because oxygen will, you know, oxygen will feel weak. Oxygen will feel that, oh my God, he's more rich than me. Because 2, 3 DPG has higher affinity. And this 2, 3 DPG is low in fetal hemoglobin, but it is high in adult hemoglobin. That is why oxygen loading, unloading is very easy in fetal hemoglobin. But oxygen loading is, is uh, loading, unloading is one sided in case of adult hemoglobin. Once it is unloaded, oxygen is unloaded, it cannot go back because of 2,3-DPG. So remember, 2,3-DPG is high in case of adult, not children. That is why when we do exercise, we are adults. When we do exercise, our muscle get more oxygen. Okay, so this 2,3-DPG is rela in related with the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. You all know what is oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. That is not our discussion today. It is not a part of hematology. It is a part of respiratory chain, respiratory system. So we will not discuss today. But oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve is a sigmoid shape curve. You all know what is sigmoid shape. This is called sigmoid shape. Sigmoid shape curve. Okay, this sigmoid shape is produced by this 2,3 DPG. Okay, so this is another discussion. So remember 2,3 DPG has a role in case of oxygen supply oxygen chain okay is that clear everyone any any doubt any confusion no okay now you have to understand the pathway this type of pathway will come in come in task exam okay not for task so remember in red blood cell there are two kinds of pathway all time happening one pathway is called emden meyerhoff pathway. Another pathway is called pentose phosphate pathway. Can anyone of you tell me what is the importance of this pathway? What is the function of this pathway? Anyone? You have anyone have any slightly you can remember? ATP form. ATP formation. Very good. Yes. You are right. Another one, some other function. ATP formation is definitely one function. Another fun function is it will form NADP. They are the form of energy, okay? ATP, NADP, they are the form of energy. But the most important for our exam is not production of energy. Most important for our exam is it maintains the red cell shape. Yes. yes. And of the memory. At the end, yes, that is the most important thing that I will discuss today because hematology chapter consists of, you know, shape disorder, enzyme disorder. So we have to understand this pathway maintain the red cell shape and osmotic gradient. That, that's why the RBC does not break down in inside, inside the blood vessel or inside the macrophage. They don't easily destroy destroyed okay now you have to understand what is spectrin protein anyone have you any idea what is spectrin protein where is the location of this protein in the cell membrane of cell outside very, cell. Good. very good yes in the cell membrane very good rbc cell membrane it is called spectrin and chirin these are the membrane protein you know there is a lipid layer and protein layer, right? We read in our first year MBBS. This is the bilayer, lipid bilayer. Inside there is some globin protein, right? This is the cell layer. So RBC also has some cell layer. So this cell layer is spectrin, made up of spectrin and chirin protein. And this protein, why important? To understand hereditary spherocytosis and hereditary elliptocytosis, okay? I remember like HS and HE, hereditary spherocytosis and elliptocytosis. These two disease, if you, if you have to understand, you have to understand the membrane, RBC membrane, okay? Now come back, very easy. I know you all know this. 
Now, can any one of you, of you tell me most common cause of anemia worldwide? Not like you. Iron deficiency. Iron deficiency. Very good. Very good. Yes, excellent. Iron deficiency. Yes. So most common cause of anemia in the world is not only iron deficiency, but also chronic blood loss. Now, what is the cause of chronic blood loss? Anyone? In females. <laughs> females, it is menorrhagia. Yes, chronic blood loss. But not only females, both male, female. What is the common cause of chronic blood yes. loss? Yes, yeah, okay. yes. yes, gastrointestinal loss. That is called helminthiasis. Yes, any kind of helminthiasis that can cause bleeding. Most common cause worldwide. And in case of females, especially the teenagers have chronic blood loss due to menorrhagia. In case of variceal bleeding, okay, these are the most two, two most common cause, IDA, iron deficiency and chronic blood loss. Most common cause of anemia worldwide. Now, this is the site of absorption of iron, okay? So here, some of my students are here, I know. Can anyone tell me what is this menomic for our class, FIFOB? Iron follicle then. Yes. Well. Complete, complete. complete, please. FIFO B means? Iron absorbed in duodenum. Very good. In jejunum. And Very good. Uh, vitamin bile acid, ileum. Very good. This is the menomic when we did our theory class. So FIFO B means? F is iron, duodenum. FO is folic acid, jejunum. B is related with vitamin B12 and bile acid. This is in the ileum. If you remember this FIFO B, you will never confused with the site of absorption. Okay. There are some other factors like intrinsic factor, then bile salt. Bile salt also B, many terminal ileum. So because of the site of absorption is very important that we will teach or we will learn in our gastroenterology chapter. But for now, you just remember that iron is absorbed in the duodenum. So any disease in the duodenum or jejunum, proximal jejunum, it can cause iron deficiency anemia. Now you have to understand the structure of him. So remember in the him, in the him, there is iron, right? In the heme, there is iron, and in the globin, there is protein. We know heme means iron, globin means protein. So when we eat something, suppose we are eating some uh, meat, fish, they have iron. Which form of the iron is absorbed? We all know, ferrous form. Ferrous form is absorbed in the duodenum, not ferric form. Even, even if you eat ferric form, it will not absorb. It will only absorb by oxidized in the, in the intestine by ferrous form. This question came in exam. Whatever I read, I, uh, dis I am discussing today, everything is recalled, okay? Ferrous form is the absorption form. So remember, when it goes, suppose this is the intestine, this is our intestine, and you eat a iron molecule or something food, it will go into the enterocyte. This is called enterocyte. This site is called enterocyte. And then it will go to the blood vessel, right? So who will carry, who will carry this ferrous iron? This name is transferrin. How can you remember this transferrin? Remember transport. Remember transport. I see I, I gave you a caps lock. Remember, transport means it is a vehicle. It is just like a vehicle. It will transfer iron to the tissue, like liver, muscle. Iron is stored in the liver. Iron is stored in the muscle. Iron is stored in the hemoglobin. So ferrous form of iron, it will go into the blood and transferring will carry it. This every question will be your recall, okay? So two molecule of ferrous form, will be carried by one molecule of transferrin. So transferrin has two seat. In this two seat, there'll be two ferrous molecule, okay? 
Now, greatest amount of iron. Have you any idea in our body, which organ has the greatest amount of iron? Liver. Liver. Sorry? Liver. 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 No. Let us see. Let us see our answer. Our answer is blood, hemoglobin. Although liver is the largest organ of our body, but the greatest amount of iron is stored into the hemo hemoglobin, that is the heme portion, because blood is five liter. How many iron is there? Right? So greatest amount of iron is present in hemoglobin. Now, let us go back to our next case. Our next slide is ferritin. Can anyone tell me the uh, function of ferritin? So when the blood is carried out by mm -hmm. transferrin, transferrin, it releases iron into the tissue. This tissue, suppose uh, you are making a pickle of mango, mango pickle. You give some preservative, right? You give some vinegar, you give some preservative. So remember this ferritin is just like a preservative. It is a storage form. Remember like tin. Tin means we store something in a tin, in a can, in a jar. So tin we store. So remember ferritin is the storage form. Yes, someone is asking each transfer in molecule, transfer to molecule. Yes, you are right. Okay, so ferritin is the tin, okay? So we will measure ferritin to know how much iron is stored in our body. So remember ferritin has a high value in diagnosis of iron deficiency anemia, right? In iron deficiency anemia, ferritin will be low because there is no storage iron. But in which condition there is iron deficiency anemia, but ferritin will be high? Can anyone tell yes. us? In case of thalassemia. Yes. Thalassemia is not an iron deficiency. Actually, thalassemia is iron excess. Okay. I told that in which type of iron deficiency anemia, there is high ferritin. Blood loss? Blood loss is normocytic anemia, not iron, iron deficiency anemia. Sorry. Okay. Any anemia of chronic disease? Anemia of chronic disease. You are partially correct. I will take your answer. Partially correct, but I I needed full answer. Full answer is if there is any infection, because Malibu. ferritin ferritin is an inflammatory marker, just like CRP. Phase reactant. Yeah. Phase react. Very good. So if your body has iron deficiency, anemia, at the same time, your body has some infection, you ferritin. will get a false picture of ferritin. So don't confuse with ferritin. In that case, who will help us to diagnose iron deficiency anemia? That is MCH, right? Mean corpuscular volume, MCV, mean corpuscular hemoglobin, MCH, hemoglobin concentration, MCHC. So this value, anti-IBC, iron binding capacity, TIBC. So these things will help you to understand iron deficiency anemia because ferritin is falsely high, falsely elevated. Now, let us go to the next thing. What is hepcidin? Can anyone tell us what is hepcidin? These are task questions, okay? These are important for task. I will tell you which one is important for FOB and which one important for AKP also. So this hepcidin, it, it can come in FOB exam, like uh, which of the following will be decreased in iron deficiency anemia or will be increased in iron deficiency anemia. So it can come as FOB also so hepcidin is a what it is a peptide hormone it prevent iron overload suppose suppose your body has iron enough iron but you are eating iron also 
So do you think all this iron will absorb into the body? No, answer is no. Who will prevent this absorption? This is called hepcidin. This hepcidin will prevent iron absorption. How? How it will prevent? Because hepcidin is just like a doorkeeper, watchman. This hepcidin is present in the enterocyte. It will not absorb iron. If your body has enough iron, hepcidin will prevent iron absorption. So your body will not have iron overload. And in case of thalassemia or you know the hemochromatosis, when there is excess iron, iron deposition into the body, that time this hepcidin is very low. And in case of iron deficiency anemia, this hepcidin will be very high because hepcidin allows all the iron to be absorbed from the enterocyte. Okay, so hepcidin prevents iron overload. These are very minute, minute topic, but you need to know. Now define anemia. We all know anemia means low hemoglobin concentration, but according to the age, according to the age, you have to know because because few days back, I'm telling you, few days back, I ordered blood test in a neonate. Okay. And it was a holiday. I blood test previous night. And, the, you know, Bangladesh, the reports comes late. So the report came at morning and it was 11 in a neonate. So my nursing staff did not bother me to tell or did not tell me. But as I am on call, so I called my nursing staff, what is the hemoglobin level? And he said, Madam, it's normal. I said, okay, what? She said, it is 11. I said, what? Is it 11? She said, yes. Madam, it is normal, na? 11. So she's comparing with adult, okay? So remember, for a neonate, 11 hemoglobin is a deficiency. For a neonate, it is a deficiency. I immediately ordered other blood tests for anemia. First of all, I did the blood group. What is the blood group of the baby, mother's blood group? What is the, you know, is there any mis mismatch? What is the level of jaundice, Coombs test? Everything I ordered because you have to know, is it is it some deficiency going on or some hemolysis going on? Or is it a G6PD, what? You have to understand the cause of anemia for a neonate. So, Hemoglobin 11 for a neonate is low, very low even. So, but it is not low for an infant or for a child. Okay. So remember for a infant, it is 10. Can anyone tell me why in a infant hemoglobin is the lowest 10? Why? Because there is a uh, physiological uh, because of reduction of erythropoietin after and okay. also reduce the lifespan of RBCs. Okay, very good. Yeah, they, these two are the cause, but just a few minutes back, I told one cause. What is that? Hemoglobin was decreasing. Yes, hemoglobin F was decreasing. And your two point is also right. Erythropoietin is also not so sufficient and baby is growing so fast that the body cannot meet the criteria. Body has anemia. So these are the reason of anemia of infancy. So this is a physiological anemia. Okay, this is a physiological anemia. So remember that in an infant, hemoglobin 10 is normal, up more than 10 is normal. And in a child, hemoglobin more than 11 is normal. For a neonate, hemoglobin more than 13 is normal. This is the cutoff limit for anemia. Okay, so investigation for anemia you have to understand because it is a highly paid question, both MRCP part one and AKP. It will definitely come. Anemia is the most common symptom, okay, in hem hematology. Now types of anemia, you all know. I know you all know. There are two classification. One classification is popular, that is microcytic, macrocytic, normocytic. You all know. So can anyone give us some example of microcytic Iron deficiency anemia, iron. thalassemia, 
thalassemia then she anemia of chronic disease anemia of chronic disease then lead lead poisoning very good i wanted to hear this yes lead poisoning so iron deficiency anemia thalassemia lead poisoning i can take three but i am not ready to take chronic anemia because you know chronic anemia has normocytic normochromic anemia unless, yes unless chronic anemia and blood loss acute blood loss these two are the causes of normocytic normochromic anemia unless if this child has severe iron deficiency associated with chronic disease like celiac disease inflammatory bowel disease cystic fibrosis they have anemia of chronic disease but it is microcytic because they have iron deficiency their gut is not functioning properly right so anemia of chronic disease has two types of anemia microcytic anemia and normocytic anemia now who can tell me what is the cause of macrocytic anemia uh, vitamin b12 folic acid deficiency intrinsic factor uh, very good intrinsic factor vitamin b12 and folic acid very good very good excellent i wanted to know all this you are mashallah the students of mrcpch mashallah you have more knowledge so there is another classification what is that iron deficiency anemia hemolytic anemia and aplastic anemia so production when a factory is closed factory is closed this is what this is aplastic anemia factory is closed factory is open but then is there is no raw material for production what is that iron deficiency anemia or or macrocytic anemia factory is open but no raw material then factory is open a raw material is there but the destroyed. production is being destroyed due to due to some defect in the machine suppose you are making jeans in a garments everything is okay but you see there is a hole in the jeans there is a problem in the jeans so you did not understand where is the problem problem is in the machine it is called hemolytic anemia so remember production defect supply defect or factory is closed i remember like that okay production defect supply is closed. supply is inefficient supply or or factory is closed yeah so this is the types of anemia iron deficiency or folate deficiency or vitamin b12 deficiency this is sub, supply is not proper hemolytic is supply okay machine everything okay but machine is defected and aplastic is factory closed factory sealed example example of aplastic anemia can anyone give us example of aplastic anemia diamond black pen Diamond black one. Why, dear, you said the most difficult one first. Say the former virus. Oh yeah. Former virus. Okay, I agree. Another one. Any leukemia? Leukemia, not aplastic anemia, dear. Chuamen diamond. Chuamen diamond, diamond black one. These are very rare, rare. Okay, I'm telling you, most common cause is viral infection. Okay, aplastic anemia due to viral infection. It is acquired cause. What is congenital aplastic anemia? This is diamond black fun, as you are saying. Congenital aplastic form. So congenital aplastic form, acquired aplastic form. Acquired aplastic form is more, more, more common, like Epstein Barr virus, like Parvo virus, right? so congenital and acquired these are two form of aplastic anemia now what is the cause of hemolytic anemia you all know thalassemia is a hemolytic anemia heterosclerosis is a hemolytic anemia and what is the cause of iron deficiency anemia we already know now red cell aplasia we already discussed aplastic anemia caused by mainly virus so parvo virus what are the virus what are the virus parvo virus epstein barr virus cytomegalovirus many many virus also in Uh, in case of uh, myelodysplastic disorder, my myelodysplastic, meaning bone marrow become fibrosed, that 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 is another cause of aplastic anemia. Okay. Now come back to the, your favorite topic, 
Okay, Diamond Black Farm and Shopman Diamond. Can anyone tell us who is telling us Diamond Black Farm? Do you know some feature of Diamond Black Farm? Can you tell us? Yes, gross retardation, mm -hmm. left ballot, mm -hmm. and triferential sum. Very good. What about the anemia then? You did not discuss anything about anemia. Yes, we are anemia. <laughs> yes, mainly red cell aplasia. Mainly red cell aplasia. And in Schwachmann diamond, in Schwachmann diamond, mainly which cell problem? Neutrophil. All three cells are neutropenia. Oh. Yes, very good. In Schwachmann diamond, mainly neutropenia occurs. Rarely RBC fall down. Rarely. So remember, remember, don't get confused with diamond black fun and Schwachmann diamond. Diamond black fun is a red cell problem with skeletal problem. And Schwachmann diamond is a neutrophil problem with pancreas problem, with skeletal problem. There are other problems I don't want to discuss, like skin problem, neurology complaint. I don't want to discuss these things. It will confuse you. Just remember diamond black fun is another thing. Schwachmann diamond is another thing. And these two don't get confused. Now tell me, MCV, MCHC, ferritin, TIVC, hemoglobin, main point of what? Main point of what? Iron deficiency. Iron deficiency anemia. Very good. Iron deficiency. When you don't know why the ferritin is high, hemoglobin is low, and you have to prove this is iron deficiency, you have to. You have to answer MCV, MCHC. So there is a chart in every book, in every MRCPCH book. Have you seen this chart of MCV, MCHC? I hope you all, all saw this chart. If you search in the net, interpretation of iron deficiency, anemia, thalassemia, you will find this chart. Remember, microcytic means MCV is low. MCV, volume is low. That is called microcytic. And macro means MCV is high. So micro and macro. And normal means MCV is normal. MCHC, mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration. Ferritin, we already discussed. It is the acute phase reactant protein. TIBC, total iron binding capacity. It is increased in case of iron deficiency anemia. But this everything is normal in case of thalassemia, write it down. Everything is normal. Just there is reticulocyte count. Hemoglobin is very low. In comparison to the hemoglobin, the cells are not so much low. Cells are okay. Hemoglobin concentration is okay. Everything okay. But why the child has anemia? Because you will find some reticulocyte. You will find some cells that are fragmented. And you will understand that everything normal, but the cells are cells are uh, having hemoglobin. Oh, please don't write on the screen, okay, Dr. Sadia. So remember, everything is okay, but why the child has anemia? This, your mind will click. It is thalassemia, because in case of iron deficiency anemia, you will find low MCV, low MCHC, low ferritin, high TIBC. You will find many points, but in case of thalassemia, you will find these things normal. This is the main point of iron deficiency, anemia, and thalassemia. And remember, this is the paid question for TAS, FOP, and AKP. Mainly, it is a clinical question. It will come in FOP and AKP. The interpretation of anemia with this chart, MCV, MCHC, ferritin. Any question until now? Is that clear, right? Okay. Now come back to hemolytic anemia. So we already discussed hemolytic anemia. Now we discussed hemolytic anemia, machine is defected. Factory is open, uh, supply is good, but machine is defected. Now, what type of defect in the machine? Can anyone tell me what are the types of hemolytic anemia? Inherited and acquired, that's it. Inherited and acquired, okay. Can you give some example of inherited? 
membrane defect enzyme defects and hemoglobinopathies acha membrane defect enzyme defect and hemoglobinopathies why you said hemoglobinopathies separately don't you think membrane defect enzyme defect is also hemoglobinopathy yes ma'am it could be hemoglobinopathy means hemoglobin is sick pathy mane ki sick hemoglobin is sick ami sick i am sick pathy means sick so membrane defect enzyme defect and thalassemia they all are hemoglobinopathies this is a cause of congenital hemolytic anemia i agree now tell me what is the cause of acquired hemolytic anemia malaria very good there is autoimmune pneumonia autoimmune hemolytic anemia excellent yes mainly two broad classification of hemolytic anemia one is congenital another is acquired as you said there are also some other autoimmune disease i'm not going in that detail so remember whatever the cause of anemia there is two kind of destruction of rbc one is called intravascular another is called extravascular how you know how can you define intravascular and extravascular is there any test that will identify there is intravascular hemolysis there is extravascular hemolysis can anyone tell us one or two point hepcidin hepcidin very good hepcidin sickle cell cystocyte yeah cystocyte okay hepcidin will be high hepcidin no actually haptoglobin i i guess you are trying to say haptoglobin right haptoglobin will be high or low in case of intravascular hemolysis haptoglobin will be high or low low i think all the sites would be the haptoglobin will be fully utilized yes yes if you have intravascular hemolysis intra not extra if you have intravascular hemolysis you will have hemoglobin in the blood right excess hemoglobin and this hemoglobin will bind to this haptoglobin and it will form a complex called haptoglobin hemoglobin complex so you are using all your sugar in the home your mother came and your mother saw there is no sugar at home because you used all the sugar same thing happened in haptoglobin haptoglobin is the sugar and you used all the sugar so hemoglobin used all the sugar so we don't find haptoglobin to measure because it formed a complex the structure altered haptoglobin hemoglobin complex so haptoglobin will be decreased in case of intravascular hemolysis also can you tell me what is cystocyte can anyone tell me what is cystocyte white cell white cell okay cystocyte it broken rbc broken broken rbc very good this broken rbc this broken rbc is seen in which type of hemolysis intravascular or extravascular intravascular intra intravascular yes cystocyte you hus so yes intravascular hemolysis that is hemolytic uremic syndrome fragmented rbc inside the blood vessel this question came in exam in fop task akp akp there is a data interpretation in this data interpretation they gave you this picture with cystocyte anemia kidney function deteriorating and cystocyte present what is the cause cause is hemolytic uremic syndrome so remember this basic very basic it is a sign of intravascular hemolysis and it is seen in mainly has has is very very dangerous has has consequences you know renal failure so these are the signs of intravascular hemolysis you can do this test and you can identify there are other things like unconjugated bilirubin will be high hemoglobin will be low right these are other other test now what is the sign of extravascular hemolysis in extravascular hemolysis your spleen your liver will be enlarged 
sometimes your lung damage RBC because lung has macrophage. Okay. So remember, extravascular hemolysis occurs in the spleen, in the liver, in the lung. Sometimes in the extravascular hemolysis, you will find sickle cell in the blood. You will find spherocyte in the blood. See, sphero, you confused with this cystocyte. Yeah, I know yeah. why. Because it is not spherocyte. There is a difference between cystocyte and spherocyte. I know you get confused with this name. So remember, cystocyte is the fragmented RBC. It is seen in intravascular hemolysis. But spherocyte or sickle cell, it is seen in extravascular hemolysis because they are destroyed in the macrophage. They do not destroy in the blood vessel. Outside the blood vessel is called extravascular hemolysis and it is plain liver lung. What is that test now? In the hemo hemolysis, there is an important test that is called that test. What is that? Test. Direct anti-globulin okay. test. Yes. Suppose this is your RBC. Your RBC is coated with antibody. Do you know the structure of antibody? What is the structure of antibody? Y, right? Y-shaped antibody, right? This is the RBC. This is the RBC, and this is the antibody that is located into the surface of the RBC. So this is called antibody coated RBC. If if my voice is breaking, please uh, let me know. I will switch my network. Is voice is clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So this is antibody coated RBC. So whenever this is present in the blood, what will happen? It will go to the spleen. It will go to the spleen and spleen will destroy this RBC because this RBC is antibody coated and spleen will think, no, this is not a normal RBC. I should break down it. I should eat it. So spleen will engulf. So this is called hemolytic anemia. Hemolytic anemia of autoantibody related. It will be destroyed. So what is the meaning of that test? Direct antiglobulin test. Means when you do, when you give some antiglobin, antiglobin and your RBC contain this antibody, so there will be a reaction of this anti-globin. It is called anti-human globulin. It is a uh, it is a enzyme. Suppose anti-human globulin. It is a protein. You will mix up this with the blood of the patient, and there will be coagulation, clump formation. This is called death test positive. Now, can anyone tell me what are the causes of positive death test? It is important for clinical exam like FOPTAS, AKP. RH, because RH incompatibility. RH incompatibility, yes. In the AKP, they will give you a data of positive death test with jaundice. In the FOP also, they will give you a data. Okay, so death test indicate hemolytic disease of newborn. Very good. And what about autoimmune hemolytic anemia? That test will be positive or negative? Positive. Positive. What about drug-induced hemolytic anemia? Positive. And what about mismatch? Like, I have a positive blood, but somehow I have given B positive blood. There will be a mismatch. It is called mismatch blood transfusion. And it is. it will be that positive. Okay, so very easily you can understand what are the causes of Coombs positive hemolytic anemia. You, you know many, I know you know that Coombs is the test, but that test, Coombs test, same thing. Coombs positive and Coombs negative, previously called Coombs test, now we call that test. There are some change, so many old students who confused with this thing. That's why you should read the recent books, recent guidelines, okay? Death and Coombs, almost same thing. So these are the positive hemolytic anemia. Now, you can understand there is Coombs negative hemolytic anemia. 
What is that? Who can tell me? Kum's negative hemolytic anemia. Anyone? Hereditary spherocytosis. Hereditary elliptocytosis. Glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. Pyruvate kinase deficiency. Thalassemia. Sickle cell anemia. They are Kum's negative hemolytic anemia. Was it very difficult question now? It was very easy question, but you get confused because you did not think in that way. So remember, congenital hemolytic anemias are Coombs negative. Acquired hemolytic anemias are usually Coombs positive. Okay. Now, anyone heard this name? Ima, I hope you heard this name. What is that? Eosin 5 melamide. For hereditary spherocytosis. Very good. Yeah, instead of osmotic fragility, yeah. they do this. Aiva, this is the answer I was asking. This is the question I was going to ask. What was the previous name of this test was osmotic fragility test. Now we don't do this test. Now, now we do eosin 5 melamide for spherocytosis, elliptocytosis. But elliptocytosis is very rare in comparison to spherocyte. Okay. Any question until now? So these are the replaced of osmotic fragility test. We identify and who can tell me what is the confirmatory test for hereditary spherocytosis? Confirmatory test? MCHC. No, answer is this one, EMA. Okay. EMA is confirmatory test, not MCHC. Okay. okay, what is the cause? Someone is asking, what is the cause of Coombs negative hemolytic anemia? Congenital hemolytic anemia like thalassemia, hereditary spherocytosis, elliptocytosis, G6PD, they are the causes of Coombs negative hemolytic anemia. And acquired hemolytic anemias are usually Coombs positive. And EMA is the test for hereditary spherocytosis. Okay. Okay, direct and indirect agglutination test. It will just remember that direct in uh, anti uh, direct test we do to detect the antibody attached in the RBC, but indirect we do to detect the antigen that is floating, floating antigen, okay. Indirect test clinically is not so important for us. So you can easily discard that. Just remember direct one, we do the antibody test that is attached in the RBC and for our pediatric clinical knowledge, that test is the most important test because Hemorrhagic disease of the, because uh, hemolytic disease of newborn, that is HDN, then mismatch blood transfusion, then autoimmune hemolytic anemia, all these are that positive. Okay. Okay, ma'am, uh -huh. and if we don't have that, can we, uh, uh, we should write just direct Coombs test. We'll advise the patient to get the yes, direct. Yes, direct Coombs test, yes. That, that is direct test, yes. You are right. So hereditary spherocytosis, is a very important topic for all the exam of MRCPCH, TAS, FOB, AKP, and clinical. So there is a very, very nice description in Science of Pediatrics book, in Survival Guide, in uh, Illustrated Textbook, any book you follow. Just remember, hereditary spherocytosis, you have to read details. What is the test? EMA. What is the treatment? Folic acid. There is no other treatment. Now, remember, in hereditary spherocytosis, spleen is bigger or liver is bigger? Who can tell me? It's spleen. Spleen. Why? Why? Sequestration. Because of sequestration. Sequestration? Or because of Elism. engulf? Yeah. Yeah. You are right. Macrophage engulf the, the unshape because hereditary spherocytosis, the spherocyte of the RBC, that is not a good shape bad shape. So the macrophage of the spleen, the engulf. Okay. So spleen is bigger than the liver. 
that negative. As we said, congenital hemolytic anemias are usually that negative, like hereditary spherocytosis. Now, I told you hereditary spherocytosis, everything is important. Treatment, investigation, signs, symptom, then autosomal dominant variety. It is autosomal dominant variety. Everything is important. Now tell me, G6PD, what is the genetic genetic transmission of G6PD? X-linked recessive. X-linked recessive. So males are sufferer, right? And females are carrier. Now, can you tell me, G6PD will develop in a neonate or no? Can develop or no? Yes or no answer? Yes. 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 Do, do you think that without any drug, G6PD can develop? Yes. Yes. Very good answer. Yes. G6PD can develop even without any drug. It is the most common cause of severe neonatal jaundice. Not most common, but very most common. I mean, one of the most common cause of severe hyperbilirubinemia in neonatal life. I told severe. I did not told mild because mild jaundice is physiological jaundice. Moderate jaundice is breast milk jaundice, ABO incompatibility, and severe variety of jaundice is RH incompatibility and G6PD. G6PD jaundice is, can be happened without any drug and there is red cell damage. So do you think the jaundice is due to red cell damage? Do you have any idea why, why the jaundice is so severe in G6PD? Madam, we are immaturation of the Very good. Excellent. Whatever is your idea, that is excellent. Whatever you told, I am very much pleased because you know that this is liver problem. Remember in G6PD, there is not severe hemolysis, but the liver is dysfunction in neonatal life. That's why, that's why there is severe jaundice. So you will not find so low hemoglobin. Hemoglobin will be near normal, but the baby will have high jaundice. That time your mind will click. What is the problem? Hemoglobin is normal, but there is high jaundice because of the liver dysfunction. Now don't go so deep why there is liver dysfunction. What is the main? Don't go so deep. Just remember in G6PD, hemolysis is not so severe, but unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia is very severe due to liver dysfunction. So remember drugs or without drugs. G6PD is the most common cause of severe hyperbilirubinemia in neonate. And over 400 million, 400 million population are affected worldwide. So it is not so uncommon, especially in Mediterranean, then, you know, European Africa, European Asian border, this area, also in African, this area has high population chance of G6PD. Now, come back to another topic. So remember, hereditary spherocytosis, G6PD, sickle cell anemia, thalassemia. This you have to read detail, okay? What is autoimmune hemolytic anemia? Now, this is your FOP, FOP question, and this is your AKP question. What is autoimmune hemolytic anemia? That means there is some autoantibody. Am I correct? What do you mean by autoantibody? My own antibody going against me. Suppose my own child going against me. This is called autoantibody. My own ant antibody, my own antigen, they are reacting each other. So autoimmune hemolytic anemia means our body is producing some antibody that goes against our antigen. So there are two kinds of autoimmune hemolytic anemia. One is warm, one other is cold antibody. Warm means IgG, cold means IgM. Remember, warm means IgG variety. So warm variety is little bit slow variety. Cold variety is a fast variety because it is IgM, okay? IgM produced fast, so cold variety fast. 
IgG produce low, so warm variety is low, right? So warm and cold autoimmune hemolytic anemia. These things will come in your clinical exam, AKP exam, okay? Now, I told you that cold is IgM, so it is fast. So can you tell me mycoplasma, Epstein-Barr virus, these are fast or slow? Fast. Yeah, sorry. Fast or slow? Fast. Fast. Yeah. So, IgM variety or IgG variety? IgG. IgM. IgM variety. Very good. So now you remember your lifelong, right? That IgG is slow. So warm variety is slow. IgM is fast. So cold variety is fast. So what is the cause of fast variety infection? Infection is the fastest route to destroy us, right? And what is the cause of co? What is the cause of warm then? Warm is slow, so SLE leukemia. They are slow, so it is IgG type. Okay, this question came many many times in exam. Now, this is your favorite topic: hemoglobinopathies. As I told you, hemoglobinopathies means pathy means I am sick. I am sick. Pathies means I am sick. Hemoglobin is sick. So sickness can be anything. It can be qualitative defect. It can be quantitative defect. Now you tell me the example of quality and quantity. Quality is hereditary spherocytosis and Very quantity good. is thalassemia. Very good. Excellent. Quality is hereditary spherocytosis, sickle cell disease, hereditary leptocytosis. It is quality. Or G6PD is also quality because the enzyme quality is bad. G6PD, enzyme is bad. Quantitative, everything is good. Membrane is good. Enzyme is good. Everything is good. But the quantity is low. Like beta globin chain is low. Alpha globin chain is low. This is called quantitative anemia. So now you understood why I said hemoglobinopathies is every kind of this thing, enzyme defect, membrane defect, and thalassemia. Some people only know thalassemia is hemoglobinopathies, but actually it is not. So thalassemia, hereditary spherocytosis, elliptocytosis, all are called hemoglobinopathy. Hemoglobinopathy means I am sick, hemoglobin is sick. Now you understood quantitative defect is thalassemia. What are the variety of thalassemia? How, how many variety of thalassemia are there? Two, alpha two and variety. beta. Alpha and beta, very good. And beta is alpha three. thalassemia, yes. And there are mixture, some mixture, alpha, uh, beta with sickle cell, beta, E beta. There are some variety of mixture. I'm not going in that detail. Just remember that Alpha thalassemia, Achha, in our body, there are 23 pair of chromosomes. Do you understand the loci and gene? You understand, right? So in every chromosome, there are two genes in two chromosomes. This is chromosome pair. This is com pair chromosome, and this is one gene, and this is one gene. They are identical gene. They are called loci, homologous gene, locus in homologous gene. These genes are located near side by side. Same gene. Suppose this gene is for hair color. This gene is for your uh, your body color. This gene is for your hand size. This gene is for your feet size. So for every character of your body, there is a homologous gene. One coming from the father, one coming from the mother. One chromosome coming from father, one chromosome coming from mother. You all know. And there is a homologous gene for coming from father and mother both. So in case of alpha thalassemia, in case of alpha thalassemia, we have four gene. That means not two gene, four gene together. This is called alpha thalassemia, four gene. So when you have gene deletion, genetic disease, gene deletion, you know what is Mendelian disorder. Mendelian disorder means gene deletion. 
when you have gene deletion, deletion of four gene is easy or deletion of two gene is easy? Tell me. Two Sorry? Two gene is easy. Two gene is easy, very good. Deletion of two gene is easy. Deletion of four gene is not easy. That is the reason alpha thalassemia major is very, very Oops. rare than beta thalassemia major. Who did not understand this point? This is a very vital point, came in TAS exam. Deletion of four gene is easy or deletion of two gene is easy? Deletion of two gene is easy. Deletion of four gene is not easy. That is why alpha thalassemia major is very, very rare in the world. Now, come back. So, alpha thalassemia major, I said rare, but intermedia, alpha thalassemia intermedia is not rare, but why people not diagnosed alpha thalassemia intermedia or alpha thalassemia trait? Why they are not diagnosed? Because they are asymptomatic. They, they, have, they don't have any symptom. They don't have any anemia even. Many of people can have alpha thalassemia trait, but we don't know. Because for every person, we don't do hemoglobin electrophoresis. Now, deletion of three gene in alpha thalassemia is called hemoglobin H disease. This is recall. Yeah. Deletion of four gene is called part hemoglobin hydroxyphetalase. It is a recall. Many people tell me that, why don't you take only recall? If I take only recall, these basic points you will miss. Okay, you need to know the basic. You have to start from the basic. Then recall is like, you know, water, drinking water. So deletion of three gene is called hemoglobin H disease. Deletion of four gene is called Barth's hemoglobin or hydroxyphetalase. And it is a very, very rare condition. And it, it causes fetal death, fetal death. So they do not survive usually. Heart failure edema, hydroxyphetalase, and hemoglobin H, even they take birth, they have a severe variety of disease like, like beta thalassemia major. They have also severe anemia, hemoglobin H disease. And the treatment is same like beta thalassemia. Okay. Any question? Okay. Now, beta thalassemia also is a congenital cause, quantitative cause. We know that quality and quantity. Quantity is alpha thalassemia and beta thalassemia, only two variety, alpha and beta. Quality has many variety like enzymopathy, okay, membranopathy. There are several defects of quality, but quantity only two. What is beta thalassemia and alpha thalassemia? Because our globin is only two types of globin in our body, adult hemoglobin, right? So see, beta thalassemia, two gene, so commoner than alpha thalassemia. Because if one gene is deleted, it will cause minor. If two gene is deleted, it will cause major, beta thalassemia major. There is other variety of intermedia, but no need. You just concentrate that there is two genes, so it is more common. Now, this chart is the top most important chart of this lecture today's topic, the concentration of hemoglobin in alpha and beta thalassemia, it will come in your AKP, part one, swap and task. Also, in clinical exam, examiner can ask you, what is the level of hemoglobin A in beta thalassemia major? The answer is zero. Absent of adult hemoglobin, zero percent. And hemoglobin A to two percent only. So all the hemoglobin is hemoglobin F. In case of beta thalassemia trait or minor, hemoglobin A2 is slightly increased. Hemoglobin A is absent also. And hemoglobin F is, you know, 97% or 96%, 96% like that. 
So this is the difference between trait and major. In case of intermedia, hemoglobin A2 is present, but a little more amount. Now, what is the sickle thalassemia? Sickle thalassemia means sickle shape and thalassemia mix up. Another is E beta thalassemia. E thalassemia and beta thalassemia mix up. Now, who can tell me in our body, what are the abnormal hemoglobin? We discussed normal hemoglobin, but we did not discuss abnormal hemoglobin. Can anyone tell me what are the abnormal hemoglobin in our body? HBS. Hemoglobin S, hemoglobin C. Very good. S, C, D, Punjab, and E. This is the menomic. S, C, D, E. These are all abnormal hemoglobin. Any of this abnormal hemoglobin if combines with beta or if combines with alpha, then it is called mix up. So there are some abnormal hemoglobin. These abnormal hemoglobin are also hemoglobinopathy because their protein chain is defected, like sickle cell anemia. Spect which kind of protein? I think valine or leucine, something like that. No? This protein is changed. Amino acid is changed. So this is called sickle. Yes, sickle. Same, protein is changed. So it is hemoglobin E. Protein is changed, hemoglobin C, hemoglobin D. So if this is a qualitative defect, this is not a quantity. Quantity is thalassemia. Quality is E beta. So remember, if quality and quantity combines, quality is what? Suppose sickle and quantity is suppose beta. So sickle beta thalassemia, very rare disease, but very dangerous, sickle beta. Okay, so if hemoglobin S is more, hemoglobin F is low, it is called hemoglobin sickle cell disease. They are mix up of qualitative and quantitative. Normal adult hemoglobin A2 is less than 2%. Yes. Yes, normal hemo adult hemoglobin, hemoglobin A is the 98%. And hemoglobin A2 is less than 2%. And hemoglobin F is 0%. Hemoglobin F is 0% in normal, normally. Yes. So remember, there may be quality and quantity mix up like E beta thalassemia. E is quality, beta is quantity. So E beta mix up. And in Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, E beta is the severe form of thalassemia. Quality and quantity mix up. Suppose mother is a trait of qualitative defect, E, and father is a trait of quantitative defect, beta, and both married, their son or daughter will have E beta thalassemia. Before marriage, pregnancy counseling, genetic counseling is that's why important. Now, beta thalassemia major details. I, I must say, you cannot escape sign symptom, you cannot escape investigation, physical examination, and management treatment. So tell me, here liver is big or spleen is big in beta thalassemia major? Liver is big. Liver is big. Liver. Yeah. Here, liver is more big, bigger than the spleen. Spleen will also be enlarged, but liver is more mainly enlarged. Oh. Okay, so beta thalassemia major details you have to read. Hereditary sclerocytosis, sickle cell, G6PD, these details. Now come back to sickle cell disease. Sickle cell disease is very important. Now tell me, sickle cell is qualitative defect or quantitative defect? It is a hemoglobinopathy. Quality or quantity? Quality. 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 Like quality. abnormal quality, like SCDE. These are abnormal hemoglobin. So it is a quality. Spleen is never enlarged than the liver unless what do you mean by that? In which sickle cell there will be spleen enlarged? Where sequestration has occurred? Yeah. 
but usually spleen is destroyed by the sickle shaped cell this is called sickle shaped autosplenectomy occur so why the spleen is enlarged hypersplenism hypersplenism does not occur in sickle cell if you have sickle beta thalassemia sickle beta thalassemia yes quantitative qualitatively yes quality quantity both defect in that case your spleen will be enlarged because there is not so much sickle shaped cell not so much so your spleen will not so much destroy it okay so remember up to 4 years of age you may not spleen may not destroy because there is hemoglobin f that is a protective hemoglobin so up to 4 year of age you may not find you may not find auto, auto splenectomy i mean when you palpate the abdomen of a of a 4 year old or 3 year old you may find spleen not so much big but you can find but after that there is started of auto splenectomy the child is growing older and older autosplenectomy is also growing also so at the age of 8 9 10 you will not find any spleen that is fibrosed that is the reason we give prophylaxis of penicillin for every patient of sickle cell disease as soon as they are diagnosed because we want to prevent the splenic dysfunction because when the spleen is not working properly it cannot destroy the capsulated organism like hemophilus influenzae meningococcus pneumococcus so to prevent this capsulated organism we give penicillin prophylaxis lifelong and you can ask me madam spleen is there why we are giving a uh, drug spleen is there dear but the spleen is malfunctioning it is already said i am tired of destroying rbc so malfunctioning spleen that's why antibiotic prophylaxis is a must in case of sickle cell disease any question we finished up to hemolytic anemia qualitative and quantitative there are other chapters like aplastic anemia detail then you have to read iron deficiency anemia details Okay, but we cannot cover this today. In next time, inshallah, I will cover. So from today's lecture, is there any anything you did not understand or you want to ask me? Do they ask questions on the leukemias? The yes, I did not discuss oncology today. Yes, leukemia is definitely leukemia. They are asking question. Leukemia is one of the most important oncology and most common oncological problem in pediatrics acute leukemic leukemia you will definitely get question in leukemia okay okay any more question from hematology today we discussed many many recalls in our topic okay in our discussion there was many recalls ma'am uh, what is the role of rdw in terms of diagnosing iron deficiency anemia yes red cell distribution white red cell has a distance in the blood. This distance is fixed. But in case of iron deficiency anemia, this distance is not increased, but the cells are small. Distance actually not increased. But as there is microcytic anemia, this distance look more. So it is increased. It is called red cell distribution white. It is increased in iron deficiency anemia, but it is a false. It is a misnomer because that distance is not increased, but their size is decreased. Did I make it clear to you? Yes. Yes. Okay. Very well. Okay. Any more question? Thank you, Dr. Sadia. Nicely explained. Thank you. Any more? If you want to know any question related to TOS, FOB, AKP. Hematology is the most important chapter after CBS and after neurology and after gastroenterology. I must say this is the fourth important chapter. CBS, 
then neuro are the most two important chapters then i have many lectures in cvs and neuro in our in my youtube and today i thought let's discuss hematology so i tried to make my best what can i do uh, what i could do so if you have any suggestion if you have any uh, uh, words to say you can say in my group i hope you all are in my groups facebook whatsapp right yes ma'am yeah. yes thank you thank you very much it is in the youtube you can see later on and uh, let let us know that what topic you want to uh, read in next session okay you just put in my group what is the topic you like to know so that i can prepare few days back okay from few days back thank you everyone for joining thank you so much thank, thank you so much ma'am